Star Citizen needs to be fun. It needs to have depth and complexity of gameplay. It needs to be spontaneous and dynamic and have unknown elements that get presented to us or for discovery. This is very much like what you would expect to see, you know, uh, you know, in any logical functioning system. A person can sit and think up all these different kinds of things to put into the game, but to take them from imagination into reality, it requires rules. So let's talk about these rules, how they get created, and how they help mold gameplay. Almost everyone that saw Tony Z's presentation about the dynamic economy at the last Citizen Con got excited. Having something that's fluid and dynamic, that's driven by the players, yet balanced by the game systems and NPCs, is something people have wanted for a while. There's also an intended gameplay of piracy that many people want. Not the griefing or trolling type of activity, but a true lawless element of society that allows you to capture people's cargo or apply some sort of extortion. But why is the rum gone? And provide true rewards and risks for pirates. Pirates. And non-pirates alike. All of this kind of gameplay, and really any time the game makes some sort of decision about what you can or cannot do, or what's going to happen, or some sort of outcome, or a calculation. Refineries can't process this material, um, you know, uh, without labor, and there's a formula that dictates how much labor is, is required in order to process this stuff. Is all driven by rules. These are also known in the industry as business rules, but I'll be referring to them as rules just for convenience in this video. The business in this case would be the business of creating a game, or perhaps specifically the business of creating a dynamic economy. If this were a game about shearing sheep, then it would be the business of sheep shearing. <laughs> I'll start by talking about exactly what is a rule, and I'll do that by taking you through a fictitious but relatable example within the game. The general construct of any rule is to start with the result or conclusion first. It's the outcome you're trying to achieve. Then you provide all the conditions that are needed in order to achieve that conclusion. Let's say we want to know when a player gets a crime stat. The conditions that may drive that conclusion are things like, did they shoot another player with a weapon? Did they fire upon another player's ship? Did they perform an illegal activity like turning off a comma ray? Were they caught carrying illegal cargo? There's a host of other things you can do that are considered a criminal activity in the game, but we'll just start with this for our example. For people that have done system development and coding, this kind of construct is rather similar in many computer languages to the age-old if-then statement, where if some conditions are met, then some sort of outcome happens. Rules flip this around and put the conclusion first. But it's more than just a grammatical convention of some sort. There are actual reasons for doing it this way. I hope you know what you're doing. That impact the gameplay and the game's construct. By putting the conclusion first, it helps keep the focus on what we're trying to achieve. It provides a clear and distinct target, and any conditions we may come up with need to be strictly bound to achieving that specific conclusion. These conclusions, therefore, also need to be singular in nature. You would never want to have a compound conclusion like saying, the player will get a crime stat and go to prison. Those are two separate outcomes, perhaps related. Myself, the boy. But they both don't always happen together. So just as a principle in rule and game development, you never tie multiple things together in your conclusion. The other thing having a single conclusion does is it allows a rule to be reused and applied elsewhere in the game when needed. I'll talk more about that as we expand on this simple rule in our example. Exposing the game logic outside of the coding and in this more natural language allows a wide array of team members to understand the game logic without having to know the programming language so they can review the conditions and contribute to their refinement. This might include people from the lore team or Chris Roberts himself. 
During this review, someone might point out that shooting another player is okay if that other player has an active bounty. Another person reviewing might point out the case of friendly fire and say that a player shouldn't get a crime stat for accidentally landing a couple shots on an unintended target. I just don't get it, Spock. I mean, what, what do they attack us for? So they might modify the rule so the game will take into consideration the amount of damage done before applying a crime stat. I'm of course making up these rules and probably simplifying this logic, but you get the idea. This communication aspect is particularly important across a large organization like CIG, with many sets of teams and different kinds of skills. They don't all have to be skilled in bricklaying to help build a wall. I'm a doctor, not a bricklayer. Laying out rules like this before coding also helps identify gameplay dependencies that might be needed to make something work. For instance, what constitutes an active bounty? Although it's a distinct piece of information, a rather yes-no thing to evaluate, yes. no. actually determining the active bounty status is probably another rule that this rule is dependent. The active bounty might have conditions about the number of crime stats that have been accumulated. One bar might not make them a target for assassination. Or maybe what area of the solar system or universe the player is in. Crimes that player committed elsewhere may have no impact where they are now. The important part is that it gives that rule dependency some visibility to the development team. They know that if they want this current rule to work, they're gonna need to create the logic and maybe even surrounding gameplay around another rule. The shop right now is a simple consumer. It's, bur it's burning off that inventory. The difference here is that the solution to that is very simple in the context of quantum. And the reason is these quanta, the next step of what we'll be working on is they'll actually require ships. Ships require engines. And so all of a sudden there's a real demand for how many power plants do you need? How many ships do you need? Or at minimum, at least make some temporary accommodations for it. The act of revealing a new dependency can be another driver behind items moving on the roadmap. I talked earlier about reuse of a rule and the importance for the conclusion to be singular. Here, in the active bounty example, it's quite likely that the state of having an active bounty not only is part of whether a person will get a crime stat, but also something that triggers the spawning of NPC police or the triggering of payout for a bounty mission. By separating the active bounty status as its own separate rule, it allows it to be reused whenever it is needed by other gameplay features. This rule reuse is also helpful to the developers for knowing when they need to create logic that needs to stand more independent of other logic to facilitate that reuse. The rules don't have to be written by the people doing the coding, but can instead, and often are, produced by people involved with the design of the gameplay. They can write the natural language, use it to facilitate reviews, then provide it to someone else to actually code, which reduces the workload on a single individual. These rules that are written out before they start development can take on a couple of different forms. It's not uncommon to express these rules as a table. This can be particularly true when a given piece of information we want to evaluate can have a number of different values for the desired outcome. It may be that the progressive severity of damage states we see in our ships is currently based on an overall health of the ship and how much damage it's taken. Then, in turn, triggers a defined damage state for the ship. Something like this might be an area that gets improved over time where damage is distributed to the different components, but it's likely there will also be an overall damage state with the associated visual and audio effects. With rules being so intrinsic to almost every bit of game logic and calculation, there's a lot more we could talk about. 
but I hope you like this deeper dive about rules and the inside peek into game development. Now, when CIG drops this term rule into one of their videos, you'll know exactly what they're talking about. This month, I'm giving away an Aurora MR with game package, courtesy of the Reed Organization. Reed is involved with engineering that includes mining and salvage mechanics, science, exploration, and transport logistics for cargo hauling. They also have a defense division, which keeps all your mining and cargo running activities safe. Reed has a focus on collaboration and a sense of respect, both within the organization and beyond to the rest of the community. Feel free to like and subscribe, use my referral code and all that jazz, and I'll be talking to you later.